So let's begin with a story about Father John Kenny, shall we? It was many years ago, 15, maybe 20. The sunset sparkled and shimmered on the surface of Lake George, admired by well-fed and well-watered Paulists, who were taking the opportunity to debate new theological opinions on just what actually happened when Jesus rose from the dead. We were actually just killing time before the Red Sox-Yankees game came on the TV. Now, one side of the dispute might be entitled, why do you look for the living among the dead? And the other entitled, they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have, where to find him. Now, John Kenny was agnostic about the Yankees and the Red Sox, an atheist, really, where they were concerned. Intrinsically evil is how he described the Yankees. But during a lull in this resurrection conversation, he drained his Manhattan, stood up, and announced, I don't know about you, but if they find the bones, I'm out of here. John believed in the resurrection from the dead. He believed that when he stripped off the surface of this life, in his flesh, in his essence, he would see God face to face. John Kenny was a man of faith as Paul envisioned faith, not as intellectual conversion, but faith as trust, a personal trust in God. His family gave Jack life, sustained him every step of the way, and John trusted his life to God, joining the Paulist fathers 66 years ago. And throughout his priesthood, he taught others to trust their lives to God. And they trusted God in no small part because they trusted John. John taught the faith to thousands of people. If we examine the baptismal records, perhaps no living Paulist has baptized more adults and brought more adults into full communion than he. His book, Now That You Are a Catholic, has first printed in 1973 and never out of print since, has sold over 150,000 copies and counting, more than all living Paulus authors combined. Humor, laughter, reason, combined with his gentle but knowledgeable appreciation of just how difficult and just how beautiful life can be, enabled John to connect people with God. When you spend time with John at dinner, in conversation, at a ball game, in class, in church, in common room, while losing to John at risk, after you spent time with him, your faith was somehow deeper, your trust in God more sure-footed. Why exactly? Who knows? It just was. You simply trusted him. Even when you disagreed with him, you trusted him. We should not be surprised. The only requirement for ministry in the gospel according to John is the answer to Jesus' question, do you love me? And the willingness to feed, care for, protect, defend his sheep. Well, John Kenny loved Jesus and through his own humanity fed us the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for his part, Jesus entrusted us 
his sheep, his church, into John's care. And John gave us every reason to trust him. John trusted the Paulist fathers. He lived his priesthood in a time of constant change, change that threatened to pull us apart, change that rewrote and revisioned our constitutions, change that saw many of his friends and classmates leave, change that saw our declining numbers force the community to leave most of the places he served and loved, change that robbed him of his physical strength and vitality. And knowing us better than perhaps we know ourselves, he trusted the future of the Paulist fathers. My last conversation with John was on the Lake George porch just this past summer. And, uh, and it was all about uh, anticipating our next assembly. He was hoping to be elected once again from College A and was eager to discuss and plan our future with the younger Paulists. For John, trusting the Paulist fathers meant belonging. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, belonging to one another as much as we belong to our mission. And if we can remember this article of his faith, then John will be at our next assembly. St. Paul laments, how can people believe in Jesus if they have not heard of him? And how can they hear of him if nobody preaches? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Well, St. Paul needn't have worried. The Kenny family sent 18-year-old Jack to the Paulus fathers. No one can ever thank you enough for doing that. He may have hopped the train from Chicago to Baltimore in 1949, but he never left you behind. You were his roots wherever he lived. And the Paulus fathers, sent John Kenny on to the order of priesthood, a sacrament he received and enfleshed. And Father John Kenny was sent to Baltimore, Boston, Grand Rapids, West Virginia, Colorado, South Carolina, and finally Vero Beach, sent into the hearts and lives of believers and non-believers alike. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful one, the psalmist tells us. And Father John was surely that, faithful and precious. So all of us here today can rest assured that at the end, it was the risen Lord who sent Father John to his eternal reward. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. sing
cleanse my soul, my Savior. 